Good evening all, how are you? My word, there's a few here already. Let's start here. Good evening, Helen. Good evening, Mr. Carroll. Ed Oliver. Helen, how are you? Can anybody hear me? Ah, right, that's good. <clears throat> a bit of a delay on the, on here tonight. Good evening, James. Good evening, Helen. Good evening, Pat. Good evening, Ed. Let's go to the very top quickly. Richard Phelan, good evening. Evening, Stuart. Mick Stratton, good evening, sir. Yes, I was putting my makeup on, mate. That's why I was a bit late getting here. Um, Stuart, how are you? Archie. Matt Harbour, good evening. Thanks for joining me. And good evening to everybody. A couple of minutes before we go live. Hiya Tom, Tom Dullers, you can hear me, that's great, excellent. And, uh, well, for those of you that have already arrived, um, I am going to be turning, as you know, hopefully turning an eccentric goblet tonight, or an off-centre goblet, and just as a bit of a a backup, um, if you can see here, there are some backups just in case they decide to go flying. I can um, attempt to do some eccentric turning on those if necessary. Well, hopefully they won't be, that won't be needed. <laughs> but you never know, you never know. Hello, Nigel and Alison. Good evening, how are you? Georgianne, good afternoon. Westcourt Wood, Woodworks, evening lads and lassies. Good evening, Westcourt Court Woodworks. How are you? Miss T, good evening. Good evening, Steve Robbins. I think I might have said that to you already. Um, just go back up to say hello to everybody. Grant, good evening, Grant. Good evening, Martin from General Turn. How are you? Ash Wogan and Simon Hopkins. Uh, Duncan, I think I said. Uh, Jess Basford, Frederick Day, good evening to one and all. Thank you very much for joining me this evening. I'm sure most of you are joining me to see this goblet fly. Um, let's hope it doesn't. But if it does, it does. What I intend to do, starting in about two or three minutes, what I intend to do is go through the um, one of the techniques or one of the methods, methods that I use to do an off-centre eccentric goblet. It's not so much about the finish, um, if we start doing finishing all the way through, then it's going to take a long time. So what I'll do is do a very brief um, abrasion and uh, just to give you some idea at each stage when I suggest or when I actually do the finishing and sanding because it very much like an ordinary goblet, you do it in sections. That's my advice anyway. Um, I'm only going to be doing one off centre because I think I did one with five years ago and to be quite honest with you it ends up looking a bit like the crankshaft on a, a car engine. Not very aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing in my view. So I'll go to the overhead. I think we'll start in a second. Um, I'm going to be turning a piece of Arcacia and it's about eight, in eight inches long and about two and a half inches um, round. I've already turned it to round and I've got it in my four jaw chuck and I'm using uh, the Axminster medium gripper jaws which are my favoured jaws for doing this sort of a turning and they're serrated and they, they give a really good hold. But as I say, I've got five backups there um, with tenons, goblets formed, so if the off centre part goes wrong, I can whip it off, put another one on and hopefully by the end of the evening show you the technique of an off-centre turning because there are various different methods obviously to get various different designs. Okay so I'll just check the overheads. That's the overhead as you can see in the medium gripper jaws and the Arcacia is in there and we'll just do the tailstock. That should be okay as well. 
so we'll make a start and I'll go to the overhead to begin with what I'm going to be doing is using my half inch spindle gouge you could use a 3 8 bowl gouge for this works equally as well now I brought the tailstock up for support and I always think if you can bring the tail stop up, stock up at any time, always do it. It can be done without it, but for the extra security, it's just as well to have it. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on. And I'll be turning at about 1500 revs. What I'm going to do to begin with is just give a rough shape to the, um, the cup of the goblet. And I would think that's going to be about here. So I'll just go in and make a very basic shape of what I'm looking for. I think that'll do for size. And then I'm just going to go across uh, to the top. Nice and easy cuts. and just do the very basic shape take a bit of wood away from here we want to leave as much wood at the uh, here when we're hollowing the cup because the more wood you have between the cup and the tailstock gives you more stability And that will give us the basic cup shape. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm not worried about the finish at this stage. Just a little bit of a ridge there. Just nice and gentle cuts. Just lift the handle and nice gentle cut. Like that, that'll do. Now the next thing is to hollow out the, the cup. So remove the tailstock and also remove the live center because believe me you don't want that digging you in the elbow so what i'm going to do now is to use my last week i used the force in a bit and this week to drill a depth hole i'm going to be using my 3 8 spindle gouge now the way i do this is to alter the tool rest so that the spindle gouge is at is horizontal when it's on center and you literally plunge in again the revs the rpm is around 1300 revs so just start the cut and then push in remove it on a regular basis so you clean you clear away the swarf and what you're doing i'll turn it off just to show i'm sure a lot of you do know what you what, what it does you start off i start off at about uh, at about sort of seven o'clock ish to start on center and then as you're going in you turn it and keep it on the horizontal keep it square into the hole in, into the hole you want to make and just push in and you just push into the depth and we're down to there so again we want to go a little bit deeper so i go in at about that and then when you get contact literally push and turn you get a feel for it clear the swarf away push in And now I should think that has got the depth I'm looking for. Just a little bit more. That's a very 
nice quick way of doing it. Now you can start, I'm going to start the back hollow now. Again, keep the rest at the same height. You're using uh, this part of the left wing and just start, hang on, let's move to the other camera. Yeah, you should be able to see that. So what I'm doing now, I've got the spindle gouge still on the horizontal or perpendicular to the bedways, horizontal to the bedways, and just using this part of the wing in a hang on, let's do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. The reason I'm using the 3 8 is to show you that it can be done. I would normally use my um, half inch spindle gouge because it has a bit more stability. It's a very, very effective way of removing wood. So it's got very hot now. Now I'm down to there. Half the cup is done. What I'm going to do now is change to my half inch spindle gouge. Now, if I'm using that, then I'm going to have to just drop the tool rest ever so slightly. So that again, I'm on center height. Now, because of the stability of this, When you hear that screeching, that means that I've just come off the cut and I'm putting too much pressure on. I'm going to have to go over arm, I'm afraid, so that might actually stop you seeing what I'm doing. Nearly there. Virtually there then. Just a couple more and we'll be at the depth I'm looking at.
Right, okay. Virtually there, do. A good point to mention, actually, is not quite often I will use this little chappy as well, which is the um, Simon Hope. Get it into camera, can I? The Simon Hope 6mm Mini Hollower. That's a great tool as well for hollowing out this sort of a, uh, a piece. I'll just do a little bit on there. I've been told a lot of times I shouldn't do it on videos. Um, put your hands into the spinning. You shouldn't put your finger in while it's spinning. Okay? It's not a safe thing to do. So I'll turn it off. Right, we're virtually there now. Now, what I like to do is use my, to get the little dimple off the bottom. This is a, started life as a half inch scraper, a round nose scraper, and I've turned it into a negative rate scraper. 60 degree angle on the main bevel, and the top relief bevel is 25. Now, that is ideal for getting a nice finish, and it's handy for the bottom. Uh, just to get rid of that little indent and again I use this on um, center height and you have to believe me when I say it's leaving a nice finish and that's taken that out there and then to go up the side I use another half inch, started life as a half inch uh, round nose scraper, and that is my favoured 3535 negative rake. And I've made it into a, like a mini bowl go, a uh, mini bowl scraper, if you like, and it's ideal for my goblets. So I just run that again at uh, centre height, just run that at the side. difficult with the camera maybe I should have lifted have the camera a bit higher actually actually if you could bear with me one second we'll just alter that a little bit just put that up a bit maybe yeah, that's better see I'm not like Ed Oliver who's got a massive team of technicians and cameramen I'm on my own is that better yeah, you can see what I'm doing there. Okay, so um, as I say, I use this negative rake scraper just to get a nice surface. And it also is a great tool for ironing out any little tool marks, any bumps that you've got. exactly the same way as you would use a heavy duty bowl scraper or any scraper on the inside of a bowl. Just get rid of that and see how he looks. Yeah, it's not too bad. A little bit at the bottom. You can see the lovely shavings you're getting off. This is very dry wood. It's a bit of acacia. Yeah, that'll be fine. As I say, we're not really going into the finish of this. It is the technique or the method for actually doing the off-centre goblets. Now, what I would do now, as with normal, I would abrade. So what I'll do, I'll start with... I'll just do 180. Turn, turn the lathe down. Let's get your... I think you should be able to hear me okay. Uh. 
and just a quick abrasion on the inside now normally I would go to say 320 but I'm just doing 180 and 240 I'm just showing you this as I say because of the method okay and then 240 and one thing let's turn this off for a minute I said to the newer turners when you're turning a pen, it, it is standard practice to abrade with the grain. And it amazes me that very few people, apart from the people who told me to do it, um, do it on a spindle turning. Now, the thing is, I mean, this is just up to 240. I mean, normally I would go to uh, 400, 600, or if I was using Yorkshire Grit, which is what I'm going to do on the inside of this this time. Um, 240, 320, and job done. Now it's not a perfect, it won't be a perfect goblet, but as I say, this is not what this is about. So, if you go with the grain on a spindle by hand, you know, to turn the lathe by hand, you are, you will be surprised what a better finish you get because you're going to be getting rid of any radial marks. So now, just putting in some mix, sanding and sealer mix. This is a 50-50 mix. I used to mix my own cellular sanding sealer and cellular sand uh, thinners, but I got lazy. And Mr. Saber Smith actually sells it pre-mixed now, so I buy it pre-mixed, as I say, because I'm lazy. Okay, so we just let that dry, and the reason for sanding sealer, as I'm sure most of you know, it seals the, the grain and then gives a better surface for your finish of choice. So just give that a couple of seconds. Let's have a look here. I can't believe it's 215 people here. I am amazed. Thank you very much indeed. And for those guys that have joined while I've been turning, thank you very much for joining me. It's lovely to see you. Um, I'll rely on Ed to say hello to everybody on my behalf. Um, as usual, just chat amongst yourselves and have a generally have a good time. Um, okay, so the sanding sealer's gone off now. So now we put a bit of Yorkshire grit on. I won't be doing this all the way all the way down. I just thought I'd do it on one part of the goblet. Otherwise, we'll be here longer than people want to be. So just basically put the Yorkshire grit on top. Have the have the lathe started off fairly so slow speed. And Yorkshire Grit, as I'm sure most of you know, and if you don't, it is an abrasive paste. I won't go into all the detail of its ingredients, because it's secret anyway. But it's basically a, a method of cutting down on your sanding with regards to the finer grits. It is recommended to sand up to 240. I tend to go to 320, but that's just me. Um, and then you are negating the need of using the finer grits and the finer grits are the ones that are more prone to stay airborne and cause the problems of dust so the lower grits obviously are heavier so they're not quite as bad so people say sometimes oh well it's you know a bit of a faff well if you're going to sand properly you're sanding all the way through 
the grits it's taking the same time and in fact I think you'll get away saving time but at the end of the day we're not most of us aren't professional turners uh, don't rely on turning for a living so time is not crucial and uh, I keep saying to the majority of my subscribers I think are weekend turners hobby turners whatever you, there's no race you're not in a rush I mean I'm demoing here now uh, when I've done a few live demos you do because I'm not experienced at it you do tend to rush a bit because you think people are getting bored well now I know after doing it eight years people get bored with me anyway so I'm not going to bother rushing <laughs> it's true okay so now basically your your goal is to just wear down the grit and turn the speed up now and what you're doing now is just getting the breaking down the grit and uh, I'm told it's the equivalent of around 800 to a thousand grit so you've negated 240, three, you've, you've negated 320, 400, 600, 800 and you're finishing off with a finish of around 800 to 1000 grit without the fine dust. Unfortunately I tend to spend an inordinate amount of time on sanding and finishing not tonight obviously um, because I learned very early on and have been told by turners far better than I that it's a real shame a lot of turners spend a lot of time turning the piece and they rush the finishing process and at the end of the day the time you spend on your finishing process will yield you great results you spend all that time turning it and you have a really bad finish people who look at it aren't really worried how long you spent on it because they only see the final product so the finishing is the key I think I mentioned this last week Cindy Drozder who is in my view the high, preset, high priestess of finials and fine turning uh, really made my day when I watched one of her live demos on Zoom about a month, six weeks ago when she actually said she spends sometimes hours sanding her finials to get it exactly as she wants it and that gave me heart because I thought I was one of the odd ones that spend a lot of time sanding and putting finish on and getting it right doesn't always work, doesn't always come out as I want it but believe you me, for those new returners who happen to be watching tonight Spend time on finishing and sanding your piece because that is the end result that people see. Now I've done this very, very quickly and I think you can see that it's a quite an acceptable finish and that's all been done pretty quickly and I assure you I wouldn't normally spend so little time on my finishing process. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to bring up support last week we used my one of my favorite ways of the old tennis ball now the only disadvantage with that if I want to as I do have a little play with the outside of the of the cup here the tennis ball as it on this one isn't going to be too much of a problem but there there is an alternative method if you have a live center what I've done on this live centre, this happens to be a, a one-way live centre, but um, any live centre will do. All I've got is a bit of old mouse pad, you know, uh, for your computer mouse on the end, and just wrapped around some um, masking tape, and I just put a cable tie on there. And that just stops you marking the inside when you finished it, and you can just bring that in and that actually is hitting now the center of the cup giving me some nice support when I want to work on the spindle obviously uh, let's go to the overhead obviously not going to be very handy when I'm off center turning but um, when you're turning 
on the center it's nice to have that bit of support yes you could take it away and turn it yes i can do it i've done it i'm sure everybody's done it but i always think that if you can have a bit of extra support use it so now i'm going to refine the the cup it's a bit thick there so better pick up the cut lift the handle follow it down lift the handle twist ever so slightly now you can see I'm getting a bit of judder in there it's because I'm not not maintaining bevel contact I don't mean you push in with a bevel you've just got to use the bevel as a guide and just lift the handle make your way to the bottom or to the middle and round. Pick up the cut there, that little... Getting a bit, getting near to what I'm looking at. I'm quite happy with that. Actually could be a little bit thinner. Start to lift the handle, but I want the transition. Lift the handle, lift the handle and down yeah that's more like the shape i'm looking for so i want to get rid of this wood now those of you that didn't come last week i was getting <laughs> i was having a bit of a problem last week with a few of my cuts i was getting the old i'll do it now getting the old skid back basically my tool rest wasn't at the right height and i wasn't maintaining my bevel contact and at one stage the tool was a little bit on the not sharp side and I again for the newer turners out there if you feel your tool needs sharpening it does you are look <laughs> it does now what I'm doing now is just turn the revs up a bit that's better about 15 1600 revs now What I'm doing now is deciding on the final shape. I'm quite happy with that. What I'm doing now is deciding on the detail I'm going to have and I will go with uh, what I call a fillet. Whether it's actually called a fillet, I don't know. I'll bring that down a bit more and then take a bit more wood away. Now this is going to start forming the actual stem. Now I want that a bit smaller, so we'll go That's starting to form the shape I'm looking for. Still not happy with that. I could go in a bit further. That's a bit better. Now what I'm going to do is use my 3/8 spindle gouge. And what I can do there, I'm lucky because I've got the double-ended tools from Simon Hope, the Crown Cryo. I can use that to get my detail down here. Now what I've done there, I've got this bevel at 30 degrees, so I call this my detail gouge. It's very pointy as you can see, and I can get into nice 
can find spaces with it. Now what I want to do is do what you would do with a, um, a skew chisel, is just give that a little bit of a shoulder, very gently, go in, meet the bottom of the cup, turn off to see whether you've got any raggedy edges, which I have. Right, so that's got to be sorted. So I go in a bit deeper and then pick up the cut on the edge with this tool and that then should get rid of those raggedy edges. And it has. No, it hasn't. There's one there. Okay, so just make that a little, again using the 3 8 now. rest a bit high. You know what it is? I'm going to have to touch this up. And the reason for that is that, sorry I'm off camera, but I'm only using the Sorby Pro Edge just to put a quick edge on it. When you use your gouge for hollowing, like I did to get the depth hole, that will take the edge off rather quickly. I was being very aggressive with it. And as I've said before, and we'll say again, if you think your tool needs sharpening, 99% of the time it does. So let's see how this performs. Absolutely superb. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to go back to my half inch spindle gauge and I'm sorry about this but that's, no that should be alright, I'm just going to say that's going to need a bit of a touch up, we'll see. What I want to do now is take, take wood away from here. I'm taking heavy cuts. But you don't need to, you don't need to, you can do light, nice light cuts if you want. Now what I want to do is to start to form the stem. And I want to bring that in to the stem. I think that will be the thickness. Back to the standard 3/8 spindle gauge, just to get that cove. Yeah, that's okay. So. And that is now going to be the stem, the first stem. So what I do now is a braid. So I'm going to braid the outside. I'll do it very, very quickly. As I say, we're not looking at a finish here. Put the revs, put the RPMs right down to about just under 800 revs, something like that. So what you need to do is to work in sections, especially that we're going to go off centre. So what you need to do is to finish this because it's 
on axis now at the moment. So what you would do is completely finish the stem as well, as well as the fillet, everything. And as I say, I'm not looking for a finish here. I'm just going through the technique. And I'll run through what I do. I'll give it a quick blast of 240. I say it's not uh, not the sort of finish that I would normally achieve. Normally achieve a better finish than this. I know what you think. I know what you're saying, but. <laughs> Okay, so we've so we signed it up to two forty. I'll give it a qu quick splodge of um, sanding sealer, and the reason I'm doing this is again for the newer turner or somebody who hasn't done a, an off centre goblet before. It's the method, not the end result we're looking at. It's not what I'm looking at anyway. <laughs> my excuse no it's to show you the method so you, you need to get um, everything done in sections because once you go off center as we'll be doing in a minute strange strange marking there hmm. no mind okay so you would let this go off, so you'd sand up to your required grits on the cup of the piece and the first part of the stem. Um, and now you would put your wax on, etc., which I'm not going to do, in the interest of time. So remove your tailstock and remove your live centre so you don't get elbow problems. Okay, now, you might be able to see there a mark. Now the reason I put a mark there is when I put it off, off center, then when I want to put it back on axis again to do the bottom part or to finish off the goblet, I know that is where it was seated on the jaws. and. It does help to get it back on axis. So what we do now is loosen the jaws and what I like to do is to just drop it keeping the bottom in contact with the front of the jaw and let's just say there and tighten up Now the reason I'm using, some of you might notice, I'm using this old Goliath chuck because my evolution has shed a couple of teeth. So I have to get on to Axminster tomorrow. Okay, so now we can see that it's off axis. Always check that it's nice and tight. Make sure your lathe is down to zero. And importantly, let's just get that out of the way. Importantly, always check that your tool rest is out of the way as well. Okay, tighten everything down. Now start your lathe off at the lowest speed you can, and if you've got variable speed, which I'm fortunate enough to have, start off at zero. Now, what you mustn't forget is that although we've hollowed the cup out, etc., you've still got these forces and the 
higher your revs, the more the force is. So there comes a time that you've got to get to a stage where the stem is going to snap. So that's why you shouldn't go too thin on the stems. But you need a fairly brisk speed to get a decent cut because you're cutting air. And that's cutting air. So I'm quite confident, he says. We'll try that. We're doing sort of 700 revs. So the next thing is to work my way down to, let's just turn that off a second. My goal is to make a, what I call a knuckle here. So you don't want to go too far because otherwise you're going to be cutting into the back of the stem. So you've got to work your way down and stop, fre well I do, stop frequently, check your progress and see how you're going. So nice light cuts, just nibble away. No one getting bevel contact. Right, we'll stop there and see what we're doing. Now you can see, don't worry about the tear out there on the edges, that's not a problem. The idea is to, I like to go to about let, this area, let's say. Now as you go to that area, you're going to have the back here, and then you'll cut that way. And then when you cut in this way, that will then eventually lead you to forming a stem. So that's the theory behind it. Don't worry about the bits of cut out, uh, the bits of... Um, tear out at this stage because there's plenty of opportunity to clean all this up. Now as soon as I go this way, just to show you, That will start. I'll stop again to show you. That will start to clean this area up. So you can see now we're getting quite a nice shape, but it's a bit big. I want to get it smaller. So what I need to do now is, I'm going a little bit nearer. Yeah. So what I want to do now is to work on this to about here. I think, yeah, I'll just give this a quick dust up on the old Sorby Pro Edge because I did a bit of hollowing with this too. And I've done the 3 8 spindle gouge, but I don't want to be using that at the moment. Just a quick couple of passes. And that's all it takes, and we've got a nice edge back on there again. Okay, so stop and have a look. Yeah, that's that's coming on. So let's go the other way. Get rid of a bit of wood here. Whoo! It's not not my friend today. There we go. See, what's happening, just to explain to you what's happening is, 
I'm not getting the bevel. Although I'm cutting air, I'm going in at the wrong angle. So now I'm okay. And again here I'll be okay. So I was going in at the wrong angle. If you get a, get a problem like that, stop the lathe. This is again for the newer turners. Uh, I mean, I do it quite often. I, I think, what have I done wrong? Stop the lathe and see what you've done and see what you're doing to create that. And that's what it was. I was going in at the wrong angle. I was going in like this. When I'm, I want to go down here, I've got to have the bevel pointing in the way I want it to go, especially when I'm cutting air. Now I want to undercut this and that will get rid of the, the fuzzies, as it were. Only doing it very roughly at the moment just to get some idea of the shape. Yeah. pretty good. Now we can clean that bit up there you see. And that's taking the shape that I'm looking for. Quite a pleasant sweep. So if you can, sorry to keep stopping, but I think it's worthwhile. So hopefully you'll see now what's going to happen is that the the stem is going to be under here and it's going to be off, it's going to be in the middle, which is going to be offset to the this stem, which is the stem on axis. trying to do here is to just get this looking yeah I like that so I just got to keep on moving wood away now where what you can do which might be an idea for the newer turner if you're gonna have a go at this if you take a parting tool and you can then make your stem like so Thought was another way of doing it. 
just to show you that. I don't particularly like doing it that way because what happens is once you get below that profile there, you've got a narrow piece of wood here. You haven't got much support and you're trying to fix this. So not the ideal situation, but it is a way of doing it. So now I just want to undercut this a bit just to give it a bit more, make it a bit more pleasing to the eye. get in there and that bit there needs a little bit of work now you can see here where I've gone like this and not followed through so it's not a problem I'll get my 3/8 spindle gouge and just work on this bit Oops, see, that's what happens. Check any damage. Only a little bit there. That's not a problem. Okay. That's going to clean up now after the next one. So, again... Just take a little bit off, get your bevel. Keep that bevel in contact, nice and smooth. Down to the middle. Just got that little bit there where it fell off. Just keep going. again nearly gone very small amount there so I would say the famous one more pass Just lifting the handle trying to get that bevel to stay while I'm cutting air and stop again yeah, that's okay. That's done. So now we can work on the stem. I say I'll go. I will go with the. We'll go with the uh, parting tool. Now the other thing to consider is you want the stem. to be the same sort of size as that stem there. Now to enable us to do that we're going to have to come in because it's not a straight stem so we're going to have to come in and scoop. Whoo and here we go again. Right so let's get rid of that because I know that is going to be very very Okay, let's check that now. Now you can see what happened here. Well, I'm not going to be silly. What I'm going to do, I mean, these things happen. Didn't happen this afternoon, but they happen. 
All you do is a little bit of abrasive and that will get rid of that. The thing is that when you're doing something like this, um, you're always going to have the possibility of a mistake. And as long as you can overcome that mistake, then the job's a good one. Uh, I defy anybody to say that everything they do goes to plan. Um, and it's not, I don't feel, I, I was nervous before I start, I always am nervous, even nervous when I do a video when I've got to edit it. <laughs> but it's not that at all, it's, it, I've got nothing, I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody, all I'm trying to do is show a method. So if something goes wrong, sort it out and carry on. Um, that's what we do in our shops every single day. So any new attorneys watching here, never be disheartened if things go wrong because people who tell you nothing ever goes wrong, they're lying. I'm sorry, they're lying. I don't care if they're professional turners. I don't care if they've been turning all their lives. Mistakes do happen. The important thing is not to treat it essentially as a, as a design opportunity, a design change is is to is to fix it and to get it to a situation where now I've done very little sanding it's been very uh, um, very crude way of sanding but I'm just trying to show you that you can actually get rid of that and got it nice and smooth now and when I sand it properly when the lathe is spinning nobody will know apart from you 374 of you <laughs> okay so that essentially is the off center turning done what we want to do now is just bring this surface this plane level with the bottom of that stem so again make sure nothing's touching and again for the newer turner why I was getting all that run back, because I was talking and not concentrating, I was trying to, I'm trying to go this way. And I was going here with my bevel pointing that way. If you're going that way, your bevel has got to point that way. I'm not getting run back now, am I? Isn't that amazing? Just got a bit more to go there. Just nice and gently follow it down. That might even be a nice little feature. That might be a nice little feature. I think you'll keep that there. Leave that there for now, and okay. So as you can see now, you've got that sort of a, a stem width of ex ex eccentricity, if you will. Okay. So now we go back on to. Oh, sorry, before you do that, what you should do is to sand. So again, I'll just take a bit of 180 and 240 just to do a brief sanding and I'll just put some sealer on it. That's all. Let's bring that down. Two minutes or oh, two seconds, I should say. You can see the advantage. Um, I'm only doing this to show you that you do um, the sanding and finishing on the axis that you're working on. Uh, to say you can't go back, you can, but it's unlikely when it's off axis, you're gonna get it back exactly the same 
you, you will get it back the same on, uh, well virtually the same, on uh, central axis because you've made that mark. That'll do, just a, a very brief bit of sand in there. Just get a bit of sanding sealer. And again, I'm showing you this so you know the what you use and what you do on each section. I haven't put any wax on here, as you know. I've just put sanding sealer on. I most probably won't part it off, actually, because I'll be able to finish it off properly. Well, I might even do it if time allows. Okay, so at that stage now you would have sanded to your desired level of sanding and then applied your finish of choice over sanding sealer or whatever you want to put on there, oil or whatever. But as I say, it's imperative, in my opinion, to do a section at a time. So I'm going to put it back onto central axis now and then get it set up to finish and then have a little break and have a chat and see if you have any questions. So the importance of this mark here is that as I undo the jaws I'll just put pressure forward and it should go straight back into where it was. Now if it's not exact that's not bad actually let's just turn him on slowly yeah I'm quite pleased with that yeah that's okay but as I always say when you have an opportunity to bring up support take that opportunity and just bring up the tailstock now here we could use the tennis ball because it's um, that part is finished so just put in a live center bring up the live center tennis ball in lock off your tailstock advance you don't want a lot of pressure just to give it that little bit of stability and you can see there it's running really true Okay, I'm going to have a, a quick drink and let's just see if there are any questions. My ugly mug again. Uh, are there any questions at all? Do, 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 do. Let's have a look, let's catch up with the, uh, with the chat, shall we? Dunk. That's a good idea. Always a good idea to get to the bottom. Why would you have been a busy lot? <laughs> right, live stream, Rob, if you try your theory, make sure you video and post it. Yeah, okay. Has anybody got any questions? Hello, Mr. Pooley, how are you? It went a bit pear-shaped. I hope you're not talking about me, Chris. <laughs> uh, well, nobody's got any questions. I can't believe there's 396 of you here. Thank you very much indeed. I'm absolutely blown away. I just want a quick drink. How are we doing? Oh, just over now. Well, that's not bad. Not bad at all. What grit do you use for sharpening, Mike? Um, I've got the Pro Edge, as you know. I use 60 grit for reshaping, 120 and then 240. And the 240 belt is on there all the time, just for a quick touch-up. I don't use the diamond belt. Uh, 240 is fine, in my opinion. Question, is there any rules for the size of goblet to stem length? Um, whatever you think looks good, not really. I mean, the rule of thirds is quite a good one to go by, where the goblet is a third of the total, uh, the, the cup of the goblet. Um, 
that, this is to Steve Robbins. Um, the, the, the cup of the goblet is approximately a third of the total length. But, I mean, there's no hard and fast rule, but that sort of looks quite good. Even if you're doing what I call a chalice, where it's a concave um, stem that goes into the actual bottom of the bowl of the goblet, that, th that third, rule of thirds, works pretty well. So base and stem two-thirds and the actual bowl a third. That's in my opinion. What are the best angles for a negative rake scraper? KG, uh, it's a can of worms, KG, honestly. I personally, 35-35, I've got a round nose scraper, um, a one-inch round nose scraper, which I, 35-35, I find it absolutely superb. Um, I've got the Simon Hope ones, which are brilliant as well. As long as you've got a relief, you can play around with the angles and find out what, are best, what works best for you, to be honest with you. I find 35-35 very good. But be warned, the more acute the angle, the um, less longevity the edge has, because obviously it's a finer edge, and what will happen is that you'll have to keep touching it up. But again, if I can just make one point... If you, if I use this this way, okay, so I only actually need to touch up that bevel. There's two 35 bevels. I don't touch that one up every time. I just touch the bottom to raise the burr. Or you can use um, you can use a honing rod or a honing uh, credit card, diamond card. Don't have to always go back to your grinder or your method of sh you know your sharpening system. You can just give it a quick touch up. Um, if you touch up the bottom angle, if you like, to raise the burr so that the wood is coming down onto the raised burr. I'm new at turning, have a three inch. Andy Cordell, I'm new to turning, have a three inch exact chuck, but want a chuck set with different jaws. What would you recommend? I do pens, bowls, goblets, etc. Many thanks. Andy, um, by a chuck set, I presume you mean. Oh, you want different jaws. Um, my advice to you is to, depending on what you want to use it for, you said you want to use, a diff, you know, for pens as well as um, goblets and that. The, the dovetail jaws, the dovetail sets of jaws, are pretty universal and they're very, very flexible. But for pen turning, I mean, I don't do pen turning, I would imagine the bet you can still use the bigger jaws, but you have dedicated pen jaws. What I would do is go to a manufacturer, whichever country you're in, I presume you're in the UK, have a chat with somebody at Axminster, to have a chat to Ed Oliver, um, have a chat to somebody from a company and tell them what you want to do, and they'll give you the options of the jaws that they've got on offer for you. Do you ever turn some of the exotic woods? Yes, I do. Um, not very often, but I do. And some exotics are brilliant. Uh, some exotics are not so brilliant. <laughs> Ron. Steve Ash, would it be worth roughing to round on each section before shaping each section? Um, sorry, I, I don't quite follow you there, Steve. Could you, uh, I don't know, roughing to round, it, it is rough to round before I started turning it and then I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, sorry. Um, Ivor, no, Nigel, Mike, do you think starting with small finials, finials cut eccentric fashion is a good way to start this type of turning? Um, yeah, I mean, Nigel, any, anything, um, I just started on, on bits of pine, you know. And you don't have to start at breakneck speed. Uh, my advice always is to start off very slowly. The cutting's not going to be happy, but you, uh, it's not going to be pleasant, but you can see what you need to do to achieve the result rather than putting it, whacking it up and just breaking things here, here there and everywhere, uh, which will happen, obviously. But if you get an, an understanding of what you need to do to achieve the goal, um, and I find that's much easier to do, or used to, when it's going slow. Um, and then you can actually see where you need to position your tool to get the desired cut you need. Hope that helps. Paul Lockwood, tend to just buy jaws as I need them and 
filling the walls today. <laughs> yeah, okay, Paul. <laughs> That's a very good ethos, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think you can do 90% of your turning with certain jaws, and you just have to be a little bit inventive. Um, I think we all are a bit too junky, and we say, oh, we'll have that, we'll have that. If you actually assess the times you use certain tools or certain jaws, um, I've got jaws there that I haven't used in years because I just don't need them. My, my, my favourite jaws of all are the ones I'm using tonight. That's the medium gripper jaws. I think they're fantastic. I really do. That's just me. Um, Andy Harris, Andy Cordell, you won't go far wrong with an Axminster Evolution SK. No, I quite agree. I've got the SK100. I've, I've had it eight years. Um, it has got one tooth missing on it, but I mean, it works perfectly eight years on, and it's had a lot of use. BB turning when you turn it off axis, Mike. Um, all right, Sean. <laughs> all right, Shay, how are you? When am I turning it off axis? It's um, been turned off axis, young Shay. You missed it. You surely didn't miss that. Chris Pooley, Steve Ash, I get you, mate. Yes, you could do it with the help of uh, the skid back issue. Oh, sorry. Yes, okay. Um, I was getting the skids earlier on, <laughs> as they say. Uh, the reason was, I was talking, not concentrating, and I wasn't making my entry cut at the right angle. My bevel was not at the angle that I needed it to be for where I wanted my tool to go. Um, and I rectified that. I'll, I'll show you on the overhead later on, if you like. Uh, I'll work up to it. So, yes, Nigel, that's the best way. J just put a bit of excuse my language, crap wood on, mess around with it and just have a look and see what you need to do and then increase the speed, increase the speed and you'll soon see. You don't need to put it off axis by any great amount. I mean, this wasn't, a, a, I've had them off worse, <laughs> bigger axes than that. Just put off a slight amount and the theory is the same. Sorry, Sykes, so Steve, uh, probably best to do as Mike's doing to keep maximum strength of wood as you go. Roughing out the sections first would be too weak. Ah, right. Okay, I've got you now. Yes, you need to keep... Sorry, I, I understand now. You, you need to keep the mass of wood as long as you can for stability, um, in my opinion, especially when you're going off axis. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard enough if you've just got that little stem with the bowl on the end. And one one favour, please, I tried it once. Do not try and work off axis and think, I'll just make a shape of a bowl and not bothering hollowing it out because you know you're going to break the stem. Don't do that because the weight of the bowl, as soon as you put it off axis, it'll go flying. Take it from me. <laughs> this I know. <laughs> oh, dear. Mark the jump wood turner. Send it, colour it, oil it, seal it, finish it. Sorry. Turn it, sand it, colour it. Mm, uh, yes, sometimes, not very often. Someone asked a question about rounding off. I think he meant it's worth roughing the round every time you move axis. Michael, he's not finished yet. No, I'm not finished yet. Um, I have just... Right, that's enough. I don't need any more questions. Right, what I'll do is... <laughs> All right, Mark, what I'll do is um, change the camera angle um, back to it. See, Shay, I have actually turned the off-send a bit. Now, the other thing is this, that you can, as I said earlier on, you, you can turn as many off-axis bits as you want, but it does get a bit silly after a while because it's, it, it, it's not actually that aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the shape, this particular shape. If I, if you go in at 90 degrees, you'll just get a disc. You, there's so many options, but like um, Nigel, Oliver Longwalk was saying, if you start doing it and play around with it, then you'll start to discover what you can do. And, you know, the options are really limitless. Now, what you can do here... When, while you're still on the other axis, if I wanted to make this the foot, I would obviously, personally, I would have turned it in con concave. But as you can see, the foot would have a 
an off-centre look to it. You would part it off now there and you'd have that off-centre bit. I'm not a great fan of that so what I will do now is turn this and this will become a, a normal foot if you like. Okay, a normal foot eventually. So again what we need to do now is just remove wood and we'll have a look at what it looks like at various points I'm stopping to show you now you see you're going to have this opposite so you want to get this in my opinion to the same sort of size as this knuckle here so that that's the goal on this one just getting rid of excess wood now very gently just reduce the size of this bottom knuckle chip there no I got away with it got away with it nearly there now with regards to where we want to be with it that's virtually the same. Now you see what happened there when I got that up, up this part here. Um, that is not by any means what I would call perfect. That is more like the shape I like for the time you've sanded it. So what I'll do now is just bring um, bring the foot down a bit. And I think See, once you've got to the, um, hmm. once you've got the design you're looking for, then it's just a case of refining it. that um, yeah not too bad I suppose yeah I think that's basically it so what we would do now is to sand up which I won't bother doing it's what I'll do is part him off and um, the most important thing to remember is that you go a section at a time on each axis complete your abrading and putting the finish on that you wish and then the last bit you would do is the last bit here which is your foot and or the base and and the foot I mean I'm not arty farty um, like Mr Carroll who has an amazingly uh, an amazing artistic streak 
I'm not that way, but there are certain things that I like and don't like. And I don't like the foot to be any bigger than the, um, the diameter of the cup. I don't like it when it comes convex. I prefer a concave um, base, personally. That's just my personal opinion. And it mustn't be a lot smaller than the cup, because otherwise it looks top heavy. So those are my uh, basic rules for myself. It doesn't mean to say they're right, but that's what I prefer. So now you've just got to make sure that you undercut the base. I will, I will take this off. I'll part it off so you can see it standing. So what I've done here now, I've just made that. A, let's just have a quick look and see what... I have no idea, I've just done it by eye. So if I take the width of that, the radius of the diameter of that, and go on there, it is very slightly smaller than the cup. And I think that'll look okay, we'll soon see. So now I'm gonna, the other thing to note obviously and to take into account is, is how uh, deep or how thick you want the base. Well again, Although it's a fairly large goblet, um, it's not going to be used. It is for um, decorative purposes. So I would think maybe that. Remembering, as I say, to undercut. Uh, if you haven't got a, a diamond parting tool, always remember to make a relief cut. Otherwise, you're parting tool could get bound in the cut. is always make sure that you don't have the tailstock up you want it free so now you have the option of sawing through if you wish with a um, with a saw or put your hand over make sure that you don't go anywhere near the turning parts of the lathe and turn the lathe up a little bit here and make sure you've got no and, uh, any cuffs or anything and just work it nice and nice and gently and try not to do what Ed Oliver did <laughs> on his demo yesterday and uh, get the parting tool underneath the cut and there's a professional turner you see so if he can do it I can do it and no rush don't put any pressure on it, just let the tool do the work. I'm doing it quite slow because I don't want this to break. <laughs> and then as you get to the middle, ease off the pressure and just take a little tiny bits. There we go. And he comes off. And then the bottom, the bottom there, whoops, hang on. The bottom there hasn't pulled the um, fibres out. If you put too much pressure on as you're to, it'll pull the fibers and that just needs to be sanded off which I would do with a rotary sander or indeed put the Jacobs truck in here with um, a sanding pad and do the sanding through the grits and finish off the bottom always for the newer turners always finish off the bottom because if another turner if another turner looks at it that's the first thing he's going to look at is the bottom you can get the uh, you can get the little nub off just with a, a skewed chisel, making sure your hands are nowhere above. There you go, and then just sand it. So there he is, finished. 
Um, not finished obviously, but that's the shape. Quite pleasing, quite nice. And then you'd sand off the bottom and uh, finish it. So, there he is. No need, unfortunately, for the spare ones. Well, I'd like to uh, take any questions now, if anybody's got one. When you turn off, can you undercut the base? Yes, yes, Douglas, yes, you do. Und undercut the base so that it sits nice and level on the surface it's going on. Thank you, Mr. Pooley, very kind. Turks to stand up for themselves and cut sand and wax at my... <laughs> uh. Well, I hope you enjoyed that um, and picked up a few hints as uh, the newer turners. Maybe some of the older turners picked up some hints of what and how not to do things. Thank you, TX. Glad you enjoyed it. Space, I appreciate that you're not competing. With... <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think there's any any competition there at all, do you? As an obvious, it's weird to use the parting tool for 90% of the work. Is it weird to use the parting tool for 90% of the work? Mike, I don't understand what you mean, mate. Sorry. As a novice, is it weird to use the parting tool for 90% of the work? Um, I only used it to part off the tool. Uh, part off the goblet, actually, Marcus. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. That's very kind. You are a gentleman, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's very kind. Yeah, I'm afraid. So, sorry, it didn't fly, Lee. I do apologise. <coughs> Wayne Fennel, thanks. Uh, edge your seat stuff. Oh, I, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Wayne. I'm glad you enjoyed it, mate. Oh, it was great fun. Just bought a strut and sex hole. Have you anything to complain about? Paul, uh, absolutely nothing, Paul. Um, I'm over the moon with it, I really am. I had the FU-230 before, it's little brother. Uh, that was brilliant, but this is something else. It's really superb. Very, very pleased with it. Thank you, Paul. That's very kind of you. You are a star. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Jess. Glad you enjoyed it. Good night, Bram. Thanks for turning in, mate. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hold the goblet up again with pleasure. Ooh. There you go. There you are, Georgian. There's the goblet. Not finished with regards to a proper finish, sanded and finished. That's basically off the tool and uh, sanded to 240. I put a bit of uh, sanding sealer on parts of it just to show the different stages at which I think you should put the finish on and do the sanding. Cheers, Nigel. That's extremely kind of you. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you. Maybe I should... Uh, Keep it there. Shall I hold it there for a while? <laughs> uh, good night, James. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for coming. Appreciate it. Okay, Paul. My pleasure. Okay, Sean. You didn't miss anything, mate. There was no flying goblets, I'm afraid. There's there's the goblet. Look, and it, it didn't fly. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Yeah, captive rings, I've, I've done many a captive ring. It's the time factor, actually, because I just don't know whether people want to sit watching me do a captive ring. I mean, this has taken an hour and hour and a half, I suppose, to finish. Um, I'm quite happy to do captive rings. I had an extra half an hour on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Mike, do you finish it so it can be used to hold liquid? No, I don't normally. Um, most of uh, most of my goblets, if not all of the goblets I've turned, and that's quite a lot, um, have already been for sh for show, if you like, for display. You, uh, Chris Pooley, I don't know if he's still on. He does quite a few goblets and chalices for use, and you can use uh, Rustings plaster coat, uh, resins. I'm not up on the type of finishes but for certain you can use various finishes to make them liquid resistant oh leisure thank you so much my dear that's very kind of you thank you very much appreciate it 
Typical, you know, finish as I sit and eat tea. Great job, mate. Uh, <coughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Mr Lockwood, I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Good night, Frederick. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for turning in. Thank you. Thank you, live steam, Rob. Thank you for turning in. I appreciate it. Hello, Chris. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. I hope to get one out every week for a while, but especially while I'm on furlough still. Lee Benson, I might watch a lot of your video, learning a lot of your older vids. <laughs> three to one no 50 50 what's the difference um well i'll be honest with you i use th i always use three to one um i use 50 50 now it's a pre-mix and it works just as well sometimes you might on certain woods which are porous um lee you might need to put two applications but nine times out of ten i just put one one on thank you mr stratton i'm glad you enjoyed it cheers mick appreciate it all right, Chris. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll wait. I'll give you I'll give you a ring when I'm finished, mate. Thanks a lot, Jerry Dempsey. Thank you, sir. Glad you enjoyed it. Many thanks. Hello, Colin. Mr. King. How are you, Adam J? Thank you. You are an absolute star. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, Colin. Well, you were there when it went flying at UKIS in 2016, weren't you, mate? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, Colin, if you were here from the beginning, but I had five five backups there, mate, just in case, you know. Not that I wasn't overconfident. I didn't want to be overconfident anyway. Andy, Cornish great. Nice to see you, Andy. How are you, mate? Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Do you use regular and microfine Yorkshire grit or just one? Uh, to be honest with you, I very rarely use the microfine because I always forget. I've only just started remembering to put sanding sealer after about four or five years. Um, I don't, I, I think for resins, etc., it's brilliant. So I'm told I don't do resin work, but um, I just use Yorkshire grit standard and that's enough for the pieces I turn. Mike, how do you know it's 50-50? I thought Martin kept it a secret. Oh, but it's 50-50 leisure of what? And I absolutely fell about laughing, and my wife did leisure, about the Uber and packing the bags earlier on. Brilliant. <laughs> that made me laugh. Uh, Phil Boulder, a few more years of practice and you might be able to turn one with a straight stem. Yeah, Mr. Bolter, I couldn't agree more, mate. I could, well, I've got them lined up here ready to try. I'm going to try to do a straight straight stem one one day. <laughs> Thanks for your confidence, Mr. Bolter. I appreciate it. Martin, gentle turn. Mike, all well explained and done as we knew. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. No, thank you for your time and thank you for joining. It makes it all worthwhile. Very enjoyable. Good night, Martin. Thanks for coming. Oh, Mr. Pooley, you are too kind. Thank you so much, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, does standard Yorkshire grit darken the wood, Adam J? Well, it does slightly. Like, you put anything onto wood, it will darken it slightly. I mean, sanding sealer, even wax, will darken it slightly. But it doesn't darken ash, for example. It just brings out the natural, the natural colour, if you like, of any finish on it. So, uh, no, it doesn't darken the wood as such, but it gives it its natural look. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> yeah, it was brilliant leisure. Thank you. Tony Ruggin, how many goblets have... Sorry? How many goblets have... Tony Ruggin, are you going to say how many goblets have I turned? <laughs> hundreds. Hundreds, I would say. Mr. Roseby, Brian, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. Thank you, sir. Glad you enjoyed it, Duncan. Thank you very much for coming in. <laughs> yes, thank you for that uh, pearl of wisdom. Brian, Brian has said to me, don't forget to keep the bevel in the direction you want it to go. It's, it's really funny. But you, you, I, I don't do things like that when I'm 
turn on my own. I was not concentrating. I'm talking, enjoying myself. And I thought, I don't know what's going on. But I think with a newer turner as well, it's so important that if you if you realise what you've done wrong, all is good because you, you, you know. It's when you don't know what you're doing wrong and you get the problems, that's when it, you know, just because you know it doesn't mean to say you always do it. <laughs> but th thanks for the information, Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tony Rudkin. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Hello, Jim Rob. Again, how are you, young man? And again, anybody that's here that I didn't welcome when they came, accept my humble apologies. Um, I uh, obviously <coughs> couldn't see everybody as I was turning. That's the next thing to learn, actually, is to be able to turn and read all the comments and sort of not not read really paying attention to the turning and that way I can blame the fact I'm not looking at it when I make mistakes. Thank you Mark Smith, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Be safe yourself my friend, I hope all is well with you. Thank you very much for coming, I appreciate it. I'm going to just nip off camera and have a quick vape, which I won't do in front of the cameras. You can't see me. You might be able to hear it though. <laughs> hmm. Shay, get a secretary, Mike. Oh, I, I, funny enough, I've asked my wife several times to uh, to give me a hand, but. Um, She's she's not interested. I must be honest. I don't think it's that uh, it's okay the way I do it. I think um, stopping to ask if people ask questions. It would be good, I suppose. I might think of getting uh, asking somebody to be a moderator, um, just on occasion, so that the chat can be kept up with, if you like. But because um, it's it's very difficult for them to let me know that somebody's asked a question while I'm turning because there's no um, there's no voice, if you like. So I, I think with Zoom, it's great. But um, yeah, if you've got somebody actually here with you, then that would be a great, great help. Oh, good. I'm glad you're well, Jim. That's good. You keep, keep safe. Hello, Steve. How are you? I've done... Steve Jeremiah, I've done 10 mile watching you, Mike. Oh, <laughs> uh, glad you enjoyed it, Steve, and thanks for coming again. Thank you. Rubber Dub Wood, I think these wood turning lives are sponsored by Diet Coke. <laughs> well, a little story about Diet Coke. I drink an inordinate amount of Diet Coke. I don't drink much alcohol, much. Um, I just drink loads of Diet Coke. I'm addicted to the caffeine. Um, one of my vices. And that is as well. <coughs> Thank you, Shay. I'm glad you think it does. News are harder. Stu, as you know, to, I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. You're from Brazil. News are harder. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you watching, my friend. Matt Harbour, they would need to be on the phone with you, maybe in an earbud. Yeah, it's a possibility, Matt. It's something I'll, I'll look at in the future. Um, if people start to complain that I'm not answering their questions. But luckily, there's a lot of people in the chat that have more knowledge than me, so they're able to answer those questions as well. Um, so it's not... <laughs> Thank you, Leisure. You've seen me drinking at UKIS. Yeah, well, that is a special occasion, or was a special occasion. Um, yeah. I, I, well, I'd have to take your word for it, because I can't remember. <laughs> I'm surprised you can. Um, right. Thank you, Clive Perrot. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you. Joseph Oliver Nope. Joseph, you do a marvellous job, mate. You do a marvellous job. Um, I, I'm going to keep on at my wife to come out and keep an eye on the chat for me and she can shout the questions to me at the time. Paul Lockwood, you might want to watch Wayne, how he does his live feeds for assistance. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've seen some of um, Wayne's, Paul, and I, I know 
it's a it's a good idea. It's a good way to go. The only thing is, and I'm not being selfish. Yeah, I know you meant Wayne Paul. Um, I don't want to have to rely on anybody. If you see what I mean, it just means it's down to me. So I'm going to keep doing what I do at the moment, and uh, then I don't have to rely on anybody and put anybody in an awkward position if they can't make it, etc. <laughs> yes. Um, luckily, well, I don't know if we've got any Ubers around here, so I'm, I'm safe. Jax, thank you for coming, Jax. Uh, Jacques, I appreciate it. And thanks for the, uh, the mentions earlier, the last few days as well. Thank you. Robin, well, thank you, great demo. Thank you, Robin. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Archie, thank you very much, Archie. Me. I'm glad you're looking forward to the next one. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed tonight and I'm glad you did too. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. I'm glad you think it works okay. I think there are a few uh, shortfalls, but um, as I say, I think most, mo most questions are answered in the chat anyway, unless it's a personal question which someone can ask afterwards. It's, it's just a bit difficult, I think, to know when to stop turning and ask for questions and, and so on and so forth. Um, this is only the first one I've <laughs> finished. I had a chance to ask questions after I finished the turning. Normally I'm chasing the goblet around the garage. Thank you, Stuart. I, I'm glad you do. I mean, you know, all feedback is welcome and uh, you're not going to please everybody. But I think this, this format with me doing it on my own is, 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 is adequate, I think, for now. Um, Thanks. Good night, Jacques. Thanks very much indeed. I'm just going to... Oh, that's something I've got to do. I've got to sort out a logo. I mean, I got this. I'm still here. I'm just having a quick vape. Ah, oh, that's better. Um, face to face. Oh, to the, hello, Scott. How are you? Nice to see you, mate. You gonna have a go at that next? Great, lovely. Loved your video, by the way. Oh, um, I'll make a quick mention. Um, blah, 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 blah. Turn it or wood turning. Um, my good friend Scott War. Only got a few videos on there, but if anybody's thinking of doing live streaming and wants to get to grips with OBS, go to. Um, Turnado, T-U-R-N-A-D-O, Turning, on YouTube, and have a look at Scott's very quick and very detailed explanation of how to start off with OBS. Absolutely spot on. Can't recommend him enough. It took him longer than a few minutes to get me sorted out, but then I'm an old man, you see. Um, <clears throat> glad you enjoyed it, Mr. York. You only got here five minutes ago. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, um, if I can find it. I've lost my goblet now. It must have fallen off. There we are, York. There's the goblet. Finished. Uh, finished with regards to turning, not regards the finish, if you see what I mean. So, uh, and it didn't go flying. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Glad you're okay. Helen Bailey, another great... Thank you, Helen. That's very kind of you. But my... <laughs> I don't think so, Helen. A turner of your abilities, my dear. <laughs> but thanks very much for turning in. I appreciate it. Delbert Freeman, been watching you for a while. Never had a chance to catch you live. Oh, it's only my, my third, I think, apart from the famous first one, Delbert, where everybody, I didn't know I was live and I was just testing it and my right forearm was in the picture for four minutes before I realised I was live. Leisure, I hope you weren't doing any piercing whilst watching, Helen. Oh, yes. Sorry, I thought you meant... Um, actually, while Helen's on, um, I'm sure she won't hear what I've got to say now, but um, I am intending to do a video on three-piece goblets, which was definitely inspired by Helen Bailey. Um, but I've done three-piece goblets for a few years and I, I've never really thought people would be interested. But if I might do a live demo on that. They're great for using up spare bits of wood and having contrasting uh, wood. And Helen, go to Helen, 
go to Helen Bailey's uh, channel and her website. She does some wonderful stuff. She really does. Rocky Smith. Hi Rocky, South Carolina, how are you? Thanks for tuning in. It's me, Mr. Mike Keith. Oh, Keith! <laughs> oh, good grief. Mr. Keith, absolutely fantastic. Thank you for tuning in, Keith. I didn't... <laughs> um, sorry about that. It's somebody I work with and... Uh, He's a good friend of mine at work. Not so good privately. No, he's a good he's a good mate of mine, actually. We have a good laugh, and I didn't realise it was him. And we call each other Mr. Keith and Mr. Mike. So, uh, now I know it's him. <laughs> Greetings from Greece. Thank you. Greetings from here, too. My pleasure, Helen. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> definitely interested in three-piece goblet. Yeah, it, it is, it's brilliant. I mean, I, I have done them before, uh, but I had a quick chat to Helen as well to ask whether she agreed with the way that I would do the, you know, the tenon and the mortise, etc. Uh, drill the hole in which piece. So, um, yeah, I might well do that if Helen has no objections. And I will give you full credit, my dear. Tony Rudkin. Tony, I'm wondering what you reckon to Yorkshire. Yorkshire grit, do you mean? Or Yorkshire as a county? They're both brilliant. I go to Yorkshire every year for my holidays. 14 years on the trot now. <coughs> and Yorkshire grit is good as well. Well, I'm going to have another five minutes if anybody has any questions, which they don't. But I do enjoy the chat as well. Um, and I'll sign off and let you get back to your Sunday night viewing. In the meantime, I'm going to go off camera again and have another vape. Can't see me. Oh, that's better. Wayne Bigfoot. Oh, never mind, Wayne. Thank you for coming anyway. Go and stand in the corner. Do 100 lines. I must not be late to Mike's live streaming. <laughs> Scott has asked me. Tornado, a tornado wood turning has asked me. Do I do segmented goblets? I have done a segmented goblet many years ago. Um... And I quite enjoyed it. It's staved. I wouldn't say segmented. I did a staved goblet. Um, and that turned out very well. I sold it, actually. It turned out very well. Um, all in the glue up, as is any segmenting. But I don't do segmenting, as you know, Scott. But, yes, yeah, staved. I might do a staved goblet again in the near future. Um, <laughs> Yorkshire folk are brilliant. Oh, you're from Yorkshire, Wayne. Are you okay? That's fine. Well, we go to Whitby. Uh, well, I don't know if we're going this year because we know we were due to go the first couple of weeks in September. But uh, with the lockdown and everything, I just don't know whether the cottage is going to be open or anything. So um, we'll have to see. But yeah, we love it up there. Absolutely love it. And yes, Yorkshire people, with the exception of you and Glyn Senior, are brilliant. Um, <laughs> Hello, Tom Wilcox. How are you? Nice to see you, mate. Did you did you actually see the goblet, Tom? Yes, Wayne, I don't need reminding you that. I know I made a goblet into two segments last week. Have I got the... I've got the cup somewhere. I'm going to use... Luckily, when, when that actually came off um that's going to the bowl of that goblet wayne on serious note is going to be used i'll make a three-piece goblet with that actually that might be the subject of a three-piece goblet video i don't know <laughs> yeah um the thing is I, as i keep saying 
I do get asked occasionally whether I, I get embarrassed if I mess up, you know, in public. And if I, even videos which I edit, um, I leave in the faux pas because we all do it. We all do it. Oh, you used to have a caravan in Whitby, Wayne. Oh, lovely. Yeah, it, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. Well, obviously, we've been going there, as I say, 13, 14 years now. And uh, you don't go for the weather. It, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. We just go, the people are nice, the town is brilliant, fish and chips are out of this world. And uh, it's just a total relax. Tom <laughs> segmented goblet back when you had eight subs. <laughs> yes, that's about right, Tom, actually. And after doing that segmented goblet, I think I went up to about 10 subs, didn't I? Um, what do you recommend someone starting out regarding dust extracting? Right escape. Um, dust extraction. Uh, it's very dear to my heart, to be honest with you. Um, if you can get a good dust extractor to extract the dust at point of making it, i.e. at the lathe, that to me is a major, major step forward. Uh, the ones I've got will um, catch up to 0.5 micron, I think it is, but that's in combination with normally I wear one of these when I'm turning and I also have a filtration system in the ceiling. Um, and if I didn't have a respirator, I would wear a valved mask minimum. But if you can ex extract the dust when you produce it and you have a good dust extractor, that is a great point. What really gets me is people actually turning without dust marks on. They've got no extraction at all. Um, and it's not something that will affect you immediately, but believe me, in later life it will. So it's very important. Oh, get you, Wayne. Got an apartment in Italy, have we? Very nice, too. Is Whitby where Michael Stratton's from? No, uh, Michael Stratton's from Newport, Pagnall Leisure. Glynn is from Scarborough, which is about 20 minutes from Whitby, I suppose. Um, but no, Mick Stratton's Newport, Pagnall, I think. Yeah, I'm sure he is. It's, it's just up the road from where I live. Hang on, what's happened here? There's no <laughs> DX51210. I won't joke about COVID-19, mate. I know a few people who have unfortunately fallen foul of it. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, let's not get too maudlin. Any good budget spindle or bowl gouges you can recommend? Um, I got a lot of my tools originally from eBay. Uh, sometimes you can get some really good deals on eBay. Um, Axminster, Record Power do a, I won't say budget range, they do a cheaper end range. It's high speed steel, but the quality of the steel is not as good as the more expensive tools, so it means you have to sharpen more, that's all. It doesn't hold an edge as long. But most major manufacturers will have a pretty good quality of tool. In fact, Martin Saban Smith, still one of the tools he bought when he started turning from Axminster, from a box set, I think, he still uses one of them. Oh, Jeff Edwards. <laughs> Do you know what, Jeff? I <laughs> Jeff Edwards is TX51210. I won't forget that now, Jeff. I mean, I feel I know you. I've, I've con been talking to you for many, many years, mate. You got a lot. You got a lot to be. Uh, you know, hang on a minute. I'm just trying to find. I can't find them. I, was trying to, <laughs> I can't remember. I had a bit of a clear out, and I can't remember what I did with the, that goblet thing I used to you made over my head. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Tony. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate it. I'm only hanging on because I like chatting. Um, the problem is when this goes on YouTube, I keep it up as well for a few weeks. Well for however long and people will moan about the fact that it's talking because they can't see what you're writing 
Sometimes it does show up in a video that's left on YouTube and other times it doesn't. Lijia, I still use my Ask Mr. Box. There we are. There's uh, proof of whoever, who was it? Our right Escape. Uh, there's a young lady here who has been turning for a while, quite a while now, and she still uses some of her box set tools from Axminster. So, yeah, worth checking them out. Oh, the spindle gauge she still uses, yeah. Um, I still, funny enough, I've still got a roughing gauge from the box set I bought when I started turning. Is it here? Yeah, there it is. That, the handle's different, but um, that spindle roughing gauge is the one that I bought eight years ago in the box set from um Axminster tools very rarely use it but it's there for because it's because it's there let the moment the chat doesn't show up till a day or so no it doesn't actually either no but um nevertheless i think there's a way of actually cutting out uh, some of the beginning and some of the end of a, a video as well well young lady i'm just afraid of uber knocking on my door <laughs> right i think it's nearly half past nine so uh michael stratton leisure i live in you i did say newport pagnell mick i told her that <laughs> thanks mick you've been there mate accident the box set was great still use at least a couple of those yeah paul lockwood that's another one uh for that gentleman can't remember your name now where is it yeah right escape yeah there's an, another turner that's been turning for many years paul lockwood he like most of us got the axminster box set and he still uses some of the tools from there as well <clears throat> i inherited my tools not sure who made them well the thing is right escape if if you can use them and you can sharpen them and they, I mean, any sharp edge will do as a wood turning tool, but it depends if it's mild steel and not high speed steel. You get a better edge on mild steel, but the edge doesn't last as long as high speed steel. Um, it, it's a trade off, you know. Um, I've, I've still got some what you would call in the, in the States Harbour Freight type tools that a mate of mine gave me when I started turning before I bought the box set from Axminster. And I tell you what, you get an edge on those and it's razor sharp, but it doesn't last long. Thank you, Jennifer Stroughton. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for coming. Hopefully, I'll see you next week. <laughs> no, I, I hope not at the same time either. <laughs> Thank you, Fran. Glad you enjoyed it. Good morning. Michael is saying good morning, Mike. Good morning, Michael. Where, where you, uh, I presume it's the, you're in the States, presumably. HF rule, <laughs> I'm afraid rules. <laughs> well, on, on a serious note, Matt, I mean, I know people say it's poor quality, etc. Yeah, a lot of people buy them and at the end of the day, they, they work, you know. Do you have Discord or anything, Mike? Um, I don't know what you mean. Sorry, do you have Discord or anything, Mike? What, Discord or that cord? No, I don't know what you mean. Do I have Discord? Sorry. Good night, Mark Lawrence. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Oh, you're in New Zealand, Mike. Ah, well, yes, it is good morning to you then. <laughs> How many hours behind you? Is it sort of, um, is it 11, 11 hours, 12 hours? Right, guys, I think um, if you have no objections, I'll call it a night. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. It's been a great, great laugh. I've enjoyed myself. Thank you, Russell. I'm looking forward to next Sunday too. Oh, you live in, oh, Brian Davis, you live in Pickering. Great. 
you know, I love that area. I, as I say, North Yorkshire is brilliant. Is a mail server communication app. Oh, right. Okay, Matt. I didn't know that. No, I don't use Discord. Sorry. Um, yeah, uh, what it is, uh, I use, obviously, YouTube as the platform, but also use OBS, which is an open source uh, software. And that's where I do all the camera jobbies and everything else. And that goes across to, to YouTube. No objection. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Keith. I didn't think you'd have any objections. Just for I got to stay on for another. I've got to stay on for another minute or two now. Thanks, Sean. Glad you enjoyed it, Sean Tyndall. Thanks very much for turning up, my friend. I appreciate it. Hopefully, see you next Sunday. See you, Stuart. The Mank Turner. See you, Stuart. Thanks very much for coming, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers. Gonna have another vape off camera now and keep an eye on the on the uh, chat as well. Thank Dave, thanks Dave Webster, glad you enjoyed it. Excuse me. Right escape, my pleasure. Thank you very much for coming, mate. If you've got any if you're on Facebook or anything and you have any questions, just find me off a personal message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. What made you change sharpening systems? Andrew Jolly. Um, I was a great uh, supporter of CBM wheels uh, and I'll be honest with you, that system, the time I got it as I wanted, it cost me an arm and a leg, it really did. However, um, a couple of friends of mine, including Ed Oliver and uh, Martin Sabre Smith had the Sorby Pro Edge and at a couple of shows I went to, I tried it and I was really impressed with it and then um, I decided to take the plunge and I tell you it is the best thing I've ever done I'm absolutely 100% I can't recommend it highly enough um, I sold my CBN setup and actually had money over after I bought the Sorby uh, I think the main thing that people go on about is the fact that you have to replace the belts yes you do but um, you don't have to replace them that often you really don't. And uh, to be honest with you, it gives a fabulous edge and it's so quick and repeatable. Now I had the one way, I had a slow speed grinder, I had two eight inch um, CBM wheels. And yeah, okay, you can set up everything, but this is so quick. It is so, once you set everything up, it is absolutely seconds to get an edge. Can't recommend it highly enough. <coughs> And you've done, Andrew Jolly, I've done a goblet with convex base and it does look wrong. Um, it is a personal opinion, but um, I, I just, it's just me. I, I just think it looks better when it's convex and it sort of blends into the stem, Andrew. That's just me, as I say. Um, not everybody will agree. I just think they look a little bit clumpy. They're okay for what I would call a chalice, a, a chunky chalice get away with it but I still think that a convex is is great personally the Sorby Pro Edge is brilliant I didn't know my chisels were blunt <laughs> you're right there Wayne um I, I will say the CBM wheels did give me a good edge but uh, the, the thing that amazes me there, there was always maybe a couple of thou out when you put it to the wheel I have never had the Sorby to the settings I've got it to uh to my turning style the bevel angles I want Wayne I have never gone there to and it's, ne it's always spot on, every time. Absolutely brilliant. Steve Jeremiah, is vape juice any good as a sanding sealer? <laughs> I haven't tried it, but, you know, there's a point, because I nearly ran out before lockdown, um, and I, I, I could have tried some uh, sanding sealer. It is mixed, you know, it is, it is thinned down, so it wouldn't be too bad. Good job returning from Spain. Thank you very much, Frana. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming. Excuse me, drinking. Right to scrape, do I use a whetstone? No, never use a whetstone for chisels. I mean, I, I used to use it for my bench chisels. Not that I'm a flat wood worker. Um, I use the Sorby Pro Edge and I've got two of these uh, credit card, diamond credit cards from James Barry. I've had these about five, six years. 
look after them a little bit dirty now to put an edge on uh, scrapers and indeed chisels if you need to but since I've had the Sorby Pro Edge I haven't really found it necessary because it's so quick um, to go to the Pro Edge and put a, an edge on your tools it's brilliant it really is Jerry Dempsey I did a large chalice with a convex base yep yeah, exactly I, I think with uh, a larger goblet chalice call it what you will um, it'll work but I, I don't think with a goblet of, of, of that sort of type that I did tonight and the ones I tend to do I just think it looks a bit clumpy but if you've got a if you've got a, especially if you've got a, a chalice that's highly decorated you know you might have some texturing on it uh, and what have you then yes it, it looks okay sharpen something on the sorby please um, three-eighths spindle gouge okay and this is no word of a lie that's all I need to do how long did that take 10 seconds and I don't know if the camera it's not the brilliant brilliant camera hang on there you go Perfect, absolutely perfect. The RKG, literally five seconds. The other important thing uh, for the newer turner out there is make sure your sharpening system is within easy reach. If it's more, I mean, that is, I mean, I've got to be careful because I've got a wired lav uh, lavalier mic on. It is literally, I'm turning here on the lathe, there's the headstock. I literally have to do one step. And I'm at my sharpening system, uh, sharpening station, and sometimes people will not sharpen often enough because oh, they can't be bothered to walk three or four paces. Matt Harbour, I use the diamond honing cards also. Yeah, they are Matt. The diamond honing cards are brilliant. The thing is with the Sorby Pro Edge as well, um, it's slightly different because you don't get a a hollow grind. Obviously, uh, you're your bevel is a straight bevel because it's basically a linisher uh, so you, you don't get a bevel um, and if you use a diamond card on that it, it works obviously but it actually scratches the bevel um, because it's not just the heel and the toe that's making contact with the card but uh, yeah uh, diamond cards are brilliant as well okay kg my pleasure Manjit Singh. Hello, Manjit. Hi, Mike. Yep, you're right about the Pro Edge sharpening is good. Glad you agree. Um, in fact, I, I haven't met anybody that's had a Pro Edge or got a Pro Edge that's got anything bad to say about it. I was a bit concerned, a bit restricted. Um, where are we? Yeah. Um, the only thing I had a problem with, and that there is a... 30 degree grind okay on my spindle gouge which I use for doing detail work etc um, and for the life of me I just kept running out of belt the width of the belt uh, I overcame that I bought a second leg uh, uh, um, a, a jig the um, oh I can't think of the name of it now this I got two of these and I altered the leg angle because I didn't want to change this one because I got all my tools uh, uh, you know working on that and I just use that for the detail gouge but if I could hand sharpen I wouldn't need it anyway but yeah it, it's it's a brilliant tool never had a problem with it right I could sit and talk all evening actually I really could because I it's, it's this is a nice nice habit of chat so I'll give it five more minutes, then I'm going. It's like it's like one more cut, and then I'm going. <laughs> I'm gonna have a vape now. How many How many of you would be offended if I had a vape in front of the camera? Well, I'm not going to, because it's wrong. That's better. 
Right escape, aren't you standing? Yes, I am standing. I might not look it, but I'm six foot two. <laughs> All right, All right Shay. <laughs> Let's call at the bar. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Um, a little aside, for those of you that are interested, and for those of you that aren't interested, I'm going to say it anyway. When I started this live streaming, I actually had to buy a new laptop um, because my old laptop didn't have the grunt. It only had eight meg, no, four meg, four meg of RAM, um, and it struggled big time. So I bought a new laptop, not a top of the range one. Um, it had 16 meg of RAM and a two point, I think it was 2.4 gigahertz um, chip. And it worked fine with two cameras and it, its webcam. Anyway, cut long story short, I decided to get another webcam because the quality on these webcams, these Logitechs, the C920s, is absolutely superb. So I thought, right, I'll, I'll ditch the laptop webcam for this one and it wouldn't run it. It just didn't have the guts. But I had a gaming computer upstairs, which I built about three years ago. It had a really fast graphics card on it, good chip and 16 mega RAM. Anyway, I, that's what I'm using now. So I've got a big 24 inch screen. I've uh, got it on a trolley and that lives in the garage now. And the laptop is upstairs in my, in my, let's call it an office, where we do our computer stuff. So yeah. Um, So the camera is on top of the screen, this one. So I'm looking up at you. Chris Pooley, midget. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris Pooley, big Chris Pooley, has been here twice, twice too often, if I may say. And I have to be honest with all of you, I have, I, I've met some big guys in my time, some big rugby players back in Wales. Chris is a, a big lad. Uh, we did a couple of pictures together and... Um, I'm stood behind the lathe and I look like a glove puppet. And I say, I'm 16 to 14 and a half stone. Chris is about six foot 12 uh, and a bit heavier than that. <laughs> um, and he made me look small. He really did. But what a lovely guy. Very nice. I, I'll ring you when I finish, Chris. I will be going in a minute. I promise everybody. Shay, we still miss the, miss the white t-shirt. What, the WTF? Wood turning fanatic. Or well, Brendan Stemp sent me that. <coughs> GB it Meg. GB not megabytes. Oh, <laughs> did I say mega 16 megabytes? Sorry, 16 giga RAM. Sorry, 16 megabytes. Cool, bloody hell. Going back now to my youth. Yeah. 8 megabyte hard drive. <laughs> He's old MB and GB are confusing. Thank you, Keith. Yes. Thank you, Keith. I'm going to have to ban you, I think, mate. It's bad enough seeing you at work without you having to bother with me in my, uh, in, in my special time, in my wood-turning time. I wouldn't have had you down as a gamer, Mike. Oh, I was a silver gamer, mate. Silver surfer. I stopped a couple of years ago. Um, I used to, uh, first person shooters, online, Battlefield, uh, Call of Duty, Battlefield was the one that I played an awful lot of, but not anymore. I've been on a diet, only 20 years. <laughs> Chris Pooley has said, for those of you that don't catch a bit of chat, he said he's, he's been on a diet, he's now only 24 stone. <laughs> 24 stone is a lot of poundage for you in the US. <laughs> Heavy, big lad. Uh, that's a great idea. I'll have to get one of those. Yeah, the, tr the trouble is, Matt, um, Brendan has sort of dropped off the wood turning circuit completely. Uh, but uh, great loss. Very, very talented man and a very nice guy too. But uh, hopefully he'll come back one day. And uh, <coughs> Paul Lockwood, CO yeah, Call of Duty. Oh, is it? Oh, OK. No, I'm not getting involved, Paul. I'll get, if I get stuck into that, that'll be it. I've got a lot to learn about this live streaming as well. So um, that's been a, a very steep learning curve. And there was a guy on earlier on, uh, Scott Wall, um, Turnodo, turn, turn turning. I mean, that guy 
gave me uh, two or three hours one night and a couple of hours the following night before I started. And uh, once you once you get it, it's okay, I think. But um, I think the bit, the bit, yeah. But you can customize, make sure I can do graphics. All oh, right, okay, Matt. Yeah, maybe. Um, hmm. I was thinking of. I, I don't do merchandise or anything, but I was thinking of. Um, of uh, no, I won't say anything because I think somebody's actually going to come out with a, a T-shirt that could be very. Um, very relevant to me, let's <laughs> put it that way. It's very addi everything's addictive. I'm into Golf Clash actually, Paul. At the moment, I've been playing that for a couple of years on the mobile, on the phone, and uh, that's that's brilliant as well. What's wrong with farm? Oh God, leisure, more relaxing than killing games. Yeah, I, I've tried that farm thing. I tell you, what I did try as well. Leisure was. <laughs> Somebody at work said, "Oh, there's this uh, this game on on uh, an app, and it was bus driving." <laughs> I tell you what, I I'd rather poke my eyes out with red hot knitting needles. And I've tried your farm game as well, and that's similar. Sorry, I need a bit of action. Yeah, well. I, I've always enjoyed, uh, Stuart, I've always enjoyed gaming anyway. And, and even in the old days, I used to like the old computer games we used to get in our pubs, you know. Uh, things like Space Invaders and uh, various other things. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. But I, I've gone gone off it now. I've gone off the computer side of things. But uh, I, I think <coughs> the, the problem with... Uh, using a computer for gaming, if you're using high graphics and you want to get all the eye candy, you you buy a new graphics card and within three or four months, um, it 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 can't can't go on full detail, you know. But uh, I spent a fortune on graphics cards years ago, but not anymore, not anymore. Yes, I know. Yes, Shay. Uh, Shay has said there's a wood turning game. Well, it, yes, I've, I've seen that. <laughs> it's a bit boring as well. A bit like my wood turning, a bit boring. <laughs> Shut up, Leisure. Yeah, that, that uh, wood turning app is, is funny. It's very funny. I think what it is with me, I've always been uh, intrigued, if you like, for any any sort of game with reality. It goes on from when you, you know when you're a kid playing with your soldiers, you know, and pretending you're in a war game. You know, it's 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 a man thing, I think. Mike Stratton, here's another word turner we don't hear from anymore. Tom Stratton, Mike. Yes, Tom Stratton. Uh, that's very true, Mick. Yeah, to Tom Stratton. Um, unfortunately. Had some health issues, health issues uh, pretty severe health issues actually, and uh, it's not for me to say what, but um, it, it caused him to bow out from the wood turning scene. Another really nice guy as well. I had the great pleasure of meeting him at the first UKIS, so at least I met him. Right, guys, I think I've taken enough of your time, but there are still 243 of you there. Ah, Bruce, Jordan Woodworks, just as I'm about to say goodnight to everybody. Um, if you've just arrived, Bruce, just to prove the point, um, <clears throat> there's the finished goblet. Not finished with regards to a finish, but finished turn goblet in one piece. And behind me, just so you know, there were five waiting in the wings in case it went flying but much to the disappointment of the majority of people watching it didn't go flying there were a couple of incidents which it could have done but it didn't right guys i'd like to once again ladies and gentlemen thank you very very much indeed for coming i really do appreciate it and for those of you that um contributed on super chat thank you very much as well and all i can say is thank you very much I will hopefully see you next Sunday. You take care now and stay safe. Cheers now. Bye-bye.